Generic greetings and welcome to Nanotech, today's beverages. A nice cup of cream Earl Grey, very nice indeed. So, Nanotech is another introversion prototype as part of the Crystallase Film Masterclass, a series of videos, releases and games where they detail what they've been working on and I guess ultimately why they have stopped working on certain projects and the reasons behind it and a little bit of a sort of analysis uh, towards that. This is the fourth release as of the time recording. We've already seen Order of Magnitude, Space Bots and Mega Processor. This is probably the lightest game in all of that although I'm hesitant to call it a game it's more of just a sort of sandbox toy box type of affair either way as always I will put links in the video description for the game store page as well as the video where they outline what their goals were and sort of why they stopped working on it this isn't a sponsored video I should point that out now but I am interested in checking these things out and all proceeds go to War Child so I'm more than happy to signal boost something like that either way let's have a look at this thing so as you can see we have if we scroll out here this big circle which is supposed to represent a sort of a petri dish type of affair but a lot of what we'll be discussing is more sort of high level um I guess ideas and what what it could actually be but the uh, the moment to moment is basically looking at all of these chains so we have these uh, white dots and the black dots connected with some red lines these are supposed to I think represent molecules originally they were going to be atoms but I think the the idea changed uh, along the way we also have these worm looking creatures we've got this sort of red uh, head on there with the yellow box around it and they're actually just going to uh, they're going to these green dots and then picking them up the idea with the game as I said is that you would make certain things originally it would be bots and then it went to sort of um, bioengineering as well so either way we have these bots that their single purpose is to grab these green dots and you can see they're doing that and every time they do that they pretty much add it to their chain so they're almost like a they're almost like snake in that sense um, so yeah um, I think they've pretty much cribbed off a Nokia 3210 for this game and as you can see they're picking all this up and they're getting in the way things are very fluid as well you can see they're getting knocked out of the way and sort of pushed and pulled and you've got all these physical forces acting on these you can hold left click and sort of drag them around you can see things are very very floaty and very springy as well you can actually right click to lock them as well so if you want to make a sort of catapulty thing then uh, well you can do that anyway as I said the idea would be that you would be presented with a problem and you have to solve it by creating something we have the options for creation on the top left there in this case what I'm going to do is press number two and create a nanobot which is pretty much going to do as we've seen previously which is go to all of these little green dots and connect all of that and grab all of those so those could represent anything really uh, diseases or certain particles whatever but they're going to do that but we also can make more I guess we can make more complex structures so if we click cell and we place these cells here and these uh, can then be sort of created uh, in such a way that we can sort of connect them all up like so and then we have a very simple sort of uh, thing here which we can drag around you know we can uh, click and drag and move it around and you see it's obviously got forces to that I'm just going to attach some sort of weird legs to that and then you can also put uh, a couple of things on it uh, specifically we've got a brain and an attractor it's the it's the brain and the attractor that I'm focusing on here we're going to use the attractors first so we'll put attractor there and attractor there and what they do it's not really such as an attractor it's more a mouth and they're going to go to these uh, these little black circles here and they're basically going to grab onto that and they're going to go om nom nom om nom nom and they eat them and then obviously all of the connected other stuff then basically disconnects and then starts floating so I think the idea was that you would have I think they mentioned something like an oil spill and you have these uh, chains here these um hydrocarbons I think they say and you would have to create some sort of organism to then eat all these things which would then clear that up and then you would have to think about what you would have to do once these have been done so once once all these have been collected what happens then um, or if you mess it up what will they start to eat inadvertently you can see we've got these snake things just going through I do very much like all of the simulation there where it's like sort of flowing through and it's making a disturbance and such and we're going to go over to our creature here and instead of just letting it crack on and do its own thing I'm going to place a brain I'm going to place it at the back there and this isn't so much a brain it's more a, a reproductive system so once they've got a certain amount of material and energy they will then basically split so as you can see we've now uh, got two of these things going and pretty much doing the exact same task so similar in 
I guess, premise to order of magnitude where you build something basic and, sorry, not order of magnitude, uh, space bots. You build something basic and give it commands. In this case, it's just doing its own thing because of the because of the type of things we've assigned to it, the connections and such, the tractors. But once they, once you've got one going, they can pretty much infinitely, infinitely split. And there we go, there's another split. And we've also got the same up there. So now we want 1 to 2 to 4, and then we'll have 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512. And, you know, it's just going to infinitely... It's, it's going to just exponentially get more and more and more uh, to a point where all of this will be filled with those. We can make a bigger one if we want to. Let's see if we can get some other ones. You can also build, you can see, off to these cells here. So if I want to just make oh, uh, just a basic blob, then we can do that. And obviously, more of these connections we put in, more stable they will potentially be because they have more connectors between them. So this isn't just, this is just a big blob as that's all we're creating here. We could create more streamlined design if we really wanted to and perhaps in, you know, a more evolved version of the game, a more mature version, then maybe you'd want to do that for maybe certain integrities or whatever. But I'm still going to have these sort of tendrils coming off it. I like the idea of those sort of feed lines there and then I'm also going to put a brain I'll put the brain right in the middle I wonder if you put multiple brains in uh, it looks like you can so I don't know how we're going to get on with this one so five and then click 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 and then click click there we go and it's going to crack on and oh you can see we've actually got <laughs> the 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 feed ones there the the attractors they've not got they're not all going towards the same thing. They, you know, you can see a lot of them there. The, there's six of them trying to get to the left ones, and the one at the right was trying to go, but no, it does not have the force of the others, and instead it's heading off. So there we go. We've got this one in, and oh, we've also got all of these try, really sort of being for control. They're trying to grab all of this. And also, these robots here, you see they've stopped. They're no longer functioning because there's no more green uh, on... On the map, as far as I can tell, no. All you can see, the green have all completely gone. I assume that. Oh no! There we go. There's some green ones. Is that a green one there? Yes, we have some green ones there. So I can place a couple of sort of. I tell you what, I'll just place loads of green ones up here. Let's see if all of these nanobots start to activate and. Yeah, they've all started to activate all of these ones and you see they're all streaming towards it. You can, if you want to as well, connect these up to these creatures. So this big one here, I can put one in here and it's a bit difficult. <laughs> it's a bit problematic if I do that. I'll show you I'll show you one probably in this one. So this is one of the original ones we created. I'm going to put it on the back there and what will happen, I actually didn't want it to connect up to that one, but it doesn't really matter. But you can see this is going to stream along and instead of destroying it, these these change it and eat it and combine it with itself. So now those two things are now connected to one another. We've got our nanobot, which would be um, sort of an inorganic uh, material, and then this bioengineered one, which means if we sort of place more of these, they're now going to be fighting each other. So the nanobot's got more strength than this, but this is still trying to do its own thing. So you could have potentially biological and non-biological things, I, I think... <laughs> don't know what else to really call them, uh, doing different types of uh, processes and working on all manner of stuff. And you can see that we've got this big one here just uh, constantly eating away. And eventually what will happen is once all of... I don't know what these things are, but uh, yeah, there's three of them. Yeah, once all of these connections, these ones here, have been removed, then these creatures will stop. They don't have any more tasks and more programming, and basically more food, and eventually they will just start to peter out. They'll start to die and decay, and then all the chains will be removed, and they'll just go back to the component parts. And you can see pretty much how we've cleaned up right in the center there. So maybe we have to make a eventually you could maybe get a a sort of organism to then chew up all of these and then basically clear it out and as i said i think the maybe the well the, the ideas that were floating around was you could have this clearing up ecological disasters you could have it more of a sci-fi or fantasy setting or um, i think it was superhero that they mentioned where you'd have like a super soldier and this would be like the cross section of bone or something like that and you'd have to knit the bone back together and you'd be working on nanotech and, and nano machines or anything like that as i said it's all sort of um just concept stuff but, yeah, that's pretty much the game. There's a couple of things you can do as well. You've got a printhead and a feed line. So I'm going to place a couple of printheads. So I'll go to seven and place one, two, 
and 3. And you can see they're right next to each other there. We then place a feed line, which essentially is an outside source of material like that. And then you can connect these up. So I'll just sort of drag that into there. I'll drag that into there and then drag that into there. And then this now is going to create the food that these things eat. So we're basically creating all of these. And there you go, look. We've now created this thing. And basically, it's now created an infinite food source. I'm going to delete those. Actually, I've actually I've just removed them instead of deleting them. It's going to put it through the printhead. And I assume you can't print a feed line, which we'd then get a stack overflow type of thing. <laughs> it would just completely break. Anyway, you can see that we've got these eating there and they'll be pretty much finished off. I think that's pretty much uh, all I really need to show you. Yeah, we can place carbon, which is those. And that's pretty much the... the game uh, there's not really much else to show as i said it is more of a high level idea stuff uh, what they were going to do later on it's very hard to i don't even think critique is the word but i think it's it's just hard to imagine where you would go because there's such there's not a great amount here in terms of what we can see i do like the simulation everything's quite floaty and uh, that's quite pleasant to look at and see um i mean you could go with a sort of ambient experience and do it that way uh yeah i guess that would be a maybe a way to go some nice relaxing music over the top Don't know if that does anything for you, but hey-ho. And I guess we could also go for a more uh, hardcore approach on the... What's what's going on here? That's very strange. We've got... Oh, because I've locked that one. Have I locked that one? Oh, I think that's a glitch. I think that's part of the... Part of these over here. And it's just constantly now pumping out <laughs> over there. Yeah, you could go with... I like say a mix between sort of your organic and inorganic things doing their own doing their own stuff, whether it be eating all of this here and then you'll have to have a maybe you'll have to have you'll have certain barriers that only only certain only certain things can eat other bits and then once they've been created maybe they're a bit more hazardous than anything else and then you'll have to have your machines come along to take care of those and you have to have this weird this weird ecosystem and have to manage that. I mean, there's, like I say, loads of ways you can go with a game at this uh, very early stage. But, yeah, that's that's pretty much what's like, what the game is. And I'm trying to see if there's any anything. Oh, there we go. So we can see over here, these these uh, things, the creatures we made, haven't had anything to eat for a while. So they've got no energy, so they're basically dying. And that means they pretty much lose all their bonds, they decay, and then they just float away like that. And maybe after you've completed everything, you end up with basically nothing, with pretty much nothing left. And, oh yeah, there's actually some over there as well. Yeah, you end up with pretty much nothing. But that is, that's a very uh, brief look at the game. As I said, it's uh, a part of the introversion prototype and the intro uh, and the Crystallase Fail Masterclass. And I can't remember if they mentioned how long they were working on this. I'm going to assume, perhaps wrongly, not long, um, considering the uh, the depth in here. But... I don't know, you could probably argue pretty much every which way about where they could go and what they could do and whether you'd enjoy it or not. And, you know, different you know, different people are like uh, different things. So if you have any suggestions or ideas or what they could do and if you like what you see, then by all means, it'd be nice to hear your thoughts on the matter and <laughs> look at all them. They're trying to go for that because I think, that, is that constantly spawning? Yeah, so that's actually constantly spawning, you see. That's an infinite source there, so it's constantly eating that. So these creatures have now got an infinite food source, which basically means that um, this thing would eventually, because they're all eating that, eventually these guys would either get enough energy to constantly reproduce and fill the entire thing. Or we'll get to a certain part where, because of the creatures and the food that's coming out, they wouldn't have enough food to reproduce, but they would have enough food to stay there, uh, so to, to stay alive indefinitely, um, as is a sort of cycle of life, etc. Um, yeah, that's quite interesting, actually. That's an interesting thing on it. So, like, some of these are not actually eating, Whereas the ones in the middle are. So these ones on the outside will most likely perish because they're not getting any energy. Whereas the ones in the middle are. But they're probably, because they're fighting over this, they don't have enough to to split. And if they do, then that 
energy, the little source that there is, even though it's infinite, will be shared by all of them. So eventually they'll either uh, outgrow the food source and die or, or whatever. And if we remove the food source, then obviously they would disappear too. But we'll not uh, <laughs> go into that too much. Either way, that's a bit of the game. As I said, this is not a sponsored video, but something I just like looking at prototypes and such. And I don't mind signal boosting because it's uh, all proceeds go to War Child anyway. But as as I said, a link's in the description for the game and also the video where Chris and Mark discuss the idea for the game. And yeah, there you are. That's a little bit of that. If you like what you see, if you like this sort of thing, then by all means let us know. As I said, if you want to... Uh, comment on what maybe what angle it could go with what maybe theme what other mechanics maybe could be added and whatnot and just what's interesting to you then would be uh, nice to hear either way i hope you have enjoyed this little look at the game thanks very much for watching take care and generic partings